So I've got a theory that I'm quite proud of, actually. Mm. Is it your theory? It is. It. Right. So I want it quoted to me. Um, if it ever gets big, I want, my, <laughs> I want my name under it. Sure. Okay. Trademarked. So I want to talk about energy. So this theory is sort of like the proof that there's a part of divine in us. Okay. So when I talk about energy, all around us, there's different frequencies, waves, vibrations, electromagnetic system, etc. Mm -hmm. And um, it all sort of flows like one big multiverse around us. And it's all happening at once. However, my basic understanding of quantum physics is that energy is made in stages and it can communicate with each other. These quantum particles are smaller than atoms. Okay. So what's not to say that there's stuff smaller than these quantum particles? And then I took a leap and they leap already. I thought on the opposite side, what's bigger than us? Okay. Planets and galaxies. Right? Further on, um you look at the idea of infinity, and I sort of feel like infinity's talked taught about as width and one galaxy, the other galaxy around but i think instead of around it's sort of within each other sort of at one big scale and it's sort of getting smaller and smaller and smaller and bigger and bigger and bigger right what's what's to say that when we're looking up in a microscope what's what's not what why can't someone be looking at us in a microscope mm. right so the next stage up is planets now is it just a coincidence that Planets are named after gods, a lot of them. In mythology, two gods often give birth to another god, right? So could the planet itself be god? Um, and then could, if two becomes one, could two planets give birth to another planet? <laughs> what are you on about, bro? <laughs> oh, yeah, listen to me, yeah, listen to me, okay? Um... Sort of like bacteria, how it sort of multiplies and reproduces. Okay. When humans give birth, we're not we're giving birth to another human. But we're also giving birth to atoms and chemicals. Yeah. Okay. Smaller stuff. That's all a baby is really. Um, <laughs> chemicals. Yeah. <laughs> so. Hold on, What is your overall argument? I, I'm, I'm nearly there. I'm nearly there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> get in there. So, if we take that that planet's a god. And two planets gave birth to Earth. The people on it are somehow God, and that sort of links into the idea that we're half God, half animal. Because if if a baby is just atoms, it, it is like small atoms and chemicals. Then we are just part of that planet. We are the product of that planet, and we are. But, but we're also ourselves humans. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> that was so much waffle. Right. But there are some bits I think you don't know what you're on about, but there are some bits I agree with. All right. So the bits I agree with is when you're talking about levels of complexity and scale, right? If you look inside a single cell, there are so many things going on in that cell that you could you could compare the workings of a cell to a society or even a whole planet you know there's tiny little bits of cytoskeleton with small bits of protein being carried carried in a vesicle around the whole cell and it's taking it to the golgi apparatus where it adds bits of lipid to make it into a, a you know a, a lipoprotein and all, all this stuff right that but then if you zoom out you've got the the organ that that cell was part of like the liver or the heart right and you zoom out further you've got the whole organism you zoom out further you've got that organism's family and then you zoom out further that's the the, the society that that family is in you can zoom out further and further maybe there are things that are up on that scale that are further than our galaxy that i that i agree with and also yeah it is interesting that when you maybe maybe we are I, I like the idea that we're kind of just on a petri dish of the gods man and that we're just like an experiment but I, I kind of agree with the levels of scale thing quantum physics i don't really understand and i like the stretching for it jacob 
I'll tell you something else about quantum physics. So the thing that I meant when they're communicating with each other, I know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy who told me about this. <laughs> <laughs> so, Is just some homeless bloke? That, that was no, 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 trust, it's, it's a reliable source. Okay. So, well, we've got two, two quantum particles, right? But one of them, how they communicate with each other, one of them turns, and then the other one turns after that. Right. So that's scary because if quantum's being a mix of AI, and that can be well, I've got to my own. That, that means that they AI can connect to each other and communicate with each other with this new quantum technology. So it is scary. And I don't know too much about it, but what do you not agree with about that theory then? It just sounds very a lot of waffle like planets giving birth to planets. But it's true, two always becomes one. What are you on about though? Like planets don't give birth to planets. Why not? I don't know, I wasn't there, but I I, I just can't see it, bro. But I respect our assumption. Res- all, all down this massive scale, it's always two becoming one, multiplying. Is That's it? Is it though? Yeah, because you know they, they say that the galaxy is getting bigger and stuff, don't they? Yeah. Or the universe is getting bigger. Yeah, but it? it isn't always two. So, yeah, it's always one. expanding, though, isn't it? Yes, but how is that two becoming one? Because. A man and a woman become a baby. Yeah, but that's just humans. Ta- yeah, you're talking about the stretching of the galaxies and the expansion. If two became one, surely be getting smaller. Why can't two planets become one? <laughs> 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 because there's, as far as I'm aware, no occurrence of it happening. There's, there's. What evidence is there that such the things happened? Because two what two if, things smash into each other and fall. But what, what, before the Big Bang, there was nothing. You don't know that, though. Well, uh, supposedly there was. This nothing. is why it's just a theory. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I think it's going to remain that way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, I don't understand why you're trying to encompass it to explain everything in the universe. <laughs> because. <laughs> Because it's a natural thing of reproduction and stuff. Right. Okay, I get that. I get that. Maybe you're coming from the side of everything has a cause and effect. Maybe? Is that where you're Yeah. You're going? Sure. <laughs> I think I think you need to go away and refine that theory before it goes anywhere else, alright? But but the the basic idea and the ingenuity to think about it, I respect Jacob. How but, sorry, go on. But I somewhat agree with you saying the planet potentially is a god and we are a product we are both a product of the planet and we are somewhat mini gods mm. is is what the point you said something like that right um i somewhat agree with that because we are we come from you know the dust of the earth when we you know when we when we die we just decompose and we return to the earth and then it's all recycled so in that sort of way i i i, I get that we are a product of the planet because we are dust ourselves and if the earth has some sort of sentient something that makes it conscious or uh, a living being then through us being living beings we are somewhat connected with each other and we are it's it, the planet is a god and we are gods however that's not how i as a christian that's not how i view things but i've heard that explanation before and i can understand why people would speculate that way the planet could have like a conscience with like all the sort of water and the wind and everything mm-hmm. So, like, we are a product of Earth. We are Earth's people. So that's yeah. sort of our divine part. We come from the Earth, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that, that's if we're assuming the planet's a god, which I think is the issue with the theory. So what I'll do is I'll perfect it. But then also the question is, like, how would a planet seduce another planet? <laughs> <laughs> and it'd be like... <laughs> right. Oh, that's a like, question. You're, in this, you're looking wet right now. <laughs> Right. I don't know. You're looking hot, man. You're you know, because you're like, the sun. back to the quantum theory. If one, if one can communicate by just sort of turning the other one, sort of, so it's possible with These, waves and any of that. I don't know anything about. Yeah, that's so, not even my my realm. I don't know about turning quantum particles. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I, I assume Joel would I'd, know more about quantum physics and just science <laughs> in general. I'll have to meet your friend of a friend of a friend of a friend. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Bash it out. Um, okay. What what is God's plan? God's plan Great song. 
Yeah. God's plan is for us to know him um, and to renew everything in the universe. What do you mean by renew? Uh, renew as in allow what is current right now to pass away to because as we know um, everything is sort of degrading in a way we're born and then we come to a peak and then we grow old and we can whatnot and cells you know start and have an end right there's a beginning and an end so because that's not the way that as, as far as christians believe that's not the way that god wanted his ultimate sort of creation to be he wanted us to live forever and be eternal he is going to renew everything so that we are we remain in that eternal state um, but before he does that he wants everyone as as many people as possible to come to that knowledge and be part of that plan through god's sort of requirements because he is god if you're god you can set requirements as to what you want to be in your quote-unquote kingdom um and yeah that's what i would say simplest the simplest explanation i can uh give you is for us to know him and to renew everything when you say god's plan is to know him yes what's he like um god as far as we understand as Christians, um, God is revealed through uh, the person and the God man, Jesus Christ. Okay, so in Jesus is the revelation, the full revelation of what God is like. Um, so if Jesus was kind, was empathetic, was powerful, was prayerful, was law abiding, that's what God is like. Um, but also we get to know more of what God, God's character is through what we believe is the word of God, which is the Bible, the collection of 66 books. Um, so all of what we understand uh, God to be is represented in Christ um, and in the word of God. What's your views on heaven and hell and what happens after we die? Is it the traditional Christian? My views on, sorry? Um, what happens when we die? What happens when we die? This is, uh, even Christians disagree on um, these topics. Uh, there are general beliefs. Uh, the general belief is that we are all eternal beings and that there's an element of us, of us that is, of course, uh, from this earth that will just stay here. It's going to do nothing. It's going to decompose. And there's a part of us that is God-breathed that, is in all of us uh the sort of consciousness that is inside of us that we can't explain that is the the god part of us that's going to live forever um that part is then taken to depends on how what specifics you believe in that part is going to experience um god's judgment depending on how you lived depending on whether you know him or whether you don't know him and then you will be placed in a particular area where god wants you to be afterwards but the gist is you will live continually forever and everyone will know god whether they believe in him or not so is judgment day real i would say so because the bible talks about judgment i imagine judgment day in my head is like you go to what when you die you get transported into this white room you might meet god and then he allocates your place yeah yeah, I mean, you could think of it that way. I've been looking into um, Dante's Inferno. Yeah. And he talks about like seven different levels of hell. Yeah. And all that to do with the seven deadly sins as well, each level. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then like a middle sort of purgatory. And then there's also le levels of heaven as well. Okay. I think that's probably possible, but I don't think you go there. I think your spirit goes there. Mm -hmm. What are you? What do you mean by you, though? Yeah. Are you your spirit? Yeah. So then you do go there. But I think, like what you said there, is like whether you um believe in God mm. or not. Mm. Um, if you didn't believe, you wouldn't go there. You you might not go any any of the places. Mm. But, but I met a guy in Costa the other day. Yeah, and um, he's very spiritual. Mm. Like the third thing he said to me was like, our soul has different levels to it. And then I just ask questions for like an hour. I like how you figured out it was the third thing that he said. <laughs> <laughs> well, the yeah. first thing, hi, how are you? Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Bain said to me that um, he used an example as an alcoholic. And he said that an alcoholic would just, after they died, they would, th their spirit would magnetically attach itself to another alcoholic or like the alcohol itself, maybe in Earth. So it wouldn't have the opportunity to go to that higher spirit realm. Um, or it could sort of look like, you know, the scene the scene in the Christmas Carol where like all the ghosts, he opens the window and all the ghosts are sort of and everywhere. That, that's what it could be like as well for those types of people. I mean, the way I view that is then maybe, you know, if those people, their spirit, their soul gets stuck in that thing. And until they can ever truly transcend their their demons, their their issues that leads them to that alcoholism, then they can't go to the eternal kingdom up in the sky until they've dealt with what they need to do here. You know, I always think about it a lot. Like, it, I struggle to to rationalize the fact that so many people die young, and then so many people who seem so like just grumpy and hostile seem to live on for so long. Mm. Um, and I think it's because to some degree, you could argue that Earth is the place where we have to do our time to mm. earn whatever's next. Mm -hmm. And I think about it like my granddad passed away at the end of June and he had a lot of problems in his life within him. You know, everything outside of him, he had a nice, comfy job. He traveled a lot. He was married. He had a family. He liked wine and cheese, all of these things. It all looked great. But there was a lot of issues with himself and he could never really truly be himself. And what I realized was he was ill for years, right? And he died because in that last six months before he died, he was able to let go and tell the truth to some degree. And I remember my mum saying to me that he had conversations with her in his dementia state that he should have had for years. And that's why he was finally able to go. So maybe, yeah, his, his soul was stuck here because there was a lot of lies in his life and he, he couldn't really be his authentic self. And then as soon as that happened, something released and he was able to go to the next stage. Do you know what I mean? Though is it possible to, uh, when we die, our soul to either remain on Earth or go up into a spirit realm? Is it possible for both to occur? To occur yeah. Part of you stays here, part of you goes up. So it's half and half. Um, I think you have to learn lessons here before mm -hmm. you can go anywhere else. And you might do that living. You probably would mostly do that living. Yeah. So well, if you don't do it living, then you've still got to learn and you might have to do it more time here. That could be sort of the purgatory state. Yeah, that's. I think that's more of like a Buddhist sort of um, side of things, where it's the belief in sort of the cyclical um, sort of way of life, where you can get reincarnated to do more time, mm -hmm. and depending on whether you were good or bad, then you'll be reincarnated into a particular kind of person or a particular kind of thing. I can I can see why there's that there's that belief. Um, as to what uh the bible sort of teaches about those kinds of things is i think when people you know pass away they just basically return to god because everyone comes from god everyone was created by god um and like re referencing what i said before whether you know him or don't know him you'll come back to him regardless because he he made you anyway um as to your sort of question as to you know the soul stays here, but the spirit goes up. I I don't see where the Bible sort of um, evidences that, um, but it could, it could it could very well be possible. Just not something I've been taught or something I've seen. Why do you think God would allow there to be people who do not know Him or believe in Him? Um, that's a good question. I love which, the question. Yeah, good question. Which um, I think a lot of people people ask um why does he allow for both realities to exist when he is god he can just make people that know him and believe in him um i think the biggest one that people sort of um uh people say as an answer is free will mm -hmm. he although god created all things he knows all things. He still wants human beings in particular, because uh, it says in the Bible, people are made in his image. He wants people in particular to come to know him out of their own volition um, and to make a decision themselves. Uh, so he's not um, as domineering as people might, you know, say he is. He is not as, you know, some people complain that God is like, you know, 
uh, a masochist, he kills people, he does all sorts of things, but um, a big part of what the Bible teaches is he wants us to call out to him, to come out to him, to um, seek his, seek him so that he draws near to us. Um, so he allows both realities that we can, so that we can make our decision ourselves. I guess if you, if you didn't have the choice whether or not to believe, then it wouldn't be worship. It would be this tyrannical God forcing everyone to believe. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good way to put it actually. Yeah. That's, uh, people would just be robots. People would be under, um, subjugation under, you know, a, a horrible, uh, tyrannical leader. Um, but if people come to him because they genuinely love him and have experienced life, uh, in him and because of him, then it's all fine and dandy. I mean, that's a beautiful world. It's also like the choice of which God you believe in, because there's different religions and ways that you can go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we need that, maybe. Yeah, we need to find our own way, find our own way to find the divine one. You know how we're supposed to serve God? Mm. I think that we could do that in the in the spirit realm, and I like the idea of um, becoming an, an angel when when I die. Yeah. So that's an interesting thought. <laughs> please elaborate. And I think, like I said, with Dante's Inferno, the different levels of heaven. It's like the closer you are, the more, the, the closer your connection with God, and the more dedication, the more faith he can put into you to serve him. And then you can do that by being an angel. I don't know what that would look like, but um, to this guy, he said to me, um, how you start from how you increase your spirituality and understand getting close to god is first you need to be aware of your your state yourself and then you need to start accepting um who you are and accepting your pain acknowledging it so you acknowledge it then you accept it and then you can grow and you can connect to god okay i like that hmm right um and that's what i think happens part of when you die yeah um in all the people that we see and admire have had some level of pain and they've accepted it and they've grown from it they're the people like when you watch a movie that's what it's all about isn't it it's about someone who has some pain some obstacle they overcome and yeah, I know I really like that. I think that's that is that is it, isn't it? Because really, kind of what we were saying earlier about why would God allow people to not believe? Why would He allow suffering? That's the other point that's made. Like, if there's no suffering, if there's no pain, then what do we do? Like, where's the growth? Where's where's the thing? Where's the faith? You won't need faith if mm. there's no pain. Yeah. If the, if everything's dandy and there's no suffering, who cares about faith, man? Let's mm. just let's just bask in our pleasure and joy. What do Christians believe that Judgment Day is judged on? Um, one of the things is, you know, uh, based on whether you accepted the message um, of if maybe you had an opportunity to hear about uh, God and to an opportunity to know him. One part of the judgment is whether you actually said yes or whether you said no. Um, that's part of it. Uh, another part of it is basically how you led, how you led your life, whether you um, stole and you know didn't make compense or you didn't you know compensate the person or you didn't admit it um you know various various ways in which um the judgment will occur um but i think the bible repeats a lot that you know everyone will be judged on you know based on their on their works um but at the same time there's the thing about the bible it's it's always got two sides of things it's, it's never it's never okay usually never just like this is it and there's no like other side of the coin with 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 god i found this always this beautiful sort of balance um between things because uh one he wants us to have free will but at the same time he controls everything mm -hmm. um he still knows where we're gonna go and how we're gonna go so it's it's, re it's really really weird uh becoming a christian around about you know 10 years ago I had to come to grips or just accept that reality like how can these how can two realities exist but i found that in in the bible and in the you know in growing up in life and finding out about my own purpose and stuff like that um there's always like this this 
harmonious balance in how life is is supposed to be but with regards to judgment it's on it's on many many layers mm. um but yeah uh best place to find that out i guess gods will know if you're ready or not yeah and you know people also kind of like to label god even though they don't believe in him right um as like very strict very um he sucks the the life and the fun out of you know everything sort of thing but God is actually very, very just. And so, for example, he won't look at you and and say, Jacob, you didn't follow me. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. He will look at your own circumstance. You will look at like, you know, how you led your life, what opportunities you had. And so your judgment might not necessarily look like Joel's. It might not necessarily look, up, look like mine. In fact, he says there's heavier judgment for people who teach and preach about the word of God. So there's a higher judgment for people who claim that they know God and who actually, you know, uh, reveal these messages to people and they're wrong. That's a very high judgment on yourself. So he's actually, um, everything that we see in the world is a picture of what God is like. The law, the legal system, a judge that sits before you, whether they're a magistrate or whether they're in the crown court, it's all an image of um, God himself. And we all, we all reflect him. So in that sense, we're also sort of like made in his image. But God's also supposed to be forgiving as well. Yes. So what, when, when on Judgment Day, if you've done a bad stuff, can't you just forgive you and stick you in heaven? He could. Who am I to say? He's, he's, he's God, his judge, and he will have mercy on who he wants to have mercy. However, um, he stipulates, as far as the Christian understanding is, he stipulates that there is only one way in which you can enter into my rest, in which you can enter into what I plan for you. And that is through uh, Jesus. That's through Jesus. And I think every Christian, that's why we're named Christians. We're little mini Christs, you know, Christian, um, because it's all about him. And he he's uh, known as the way, the truth and the life. And that's God's requirement for people to know him because that's the way he said things. So uh, that's going to be the, I think, the fundamental basis as to um, how judgment occurs. Mm. And in fact, you were talking about angels and whatnot, right? Yeah. It might be fun to be an angel, but God actually says, um, not like to me, but in the word, um, he says that we will judge any angels, that we are actually, even though we we look at ourselves like, oh, me compared to an angel, uh, this is a majestic creature, uh, God actually says, you're much better than an angel and you have known more things than what I've revealed to the angels and you, if you are in Jesus, will judge angels. So actually it might be better for you to just stay as you are than How to can become I be an, angel. Than an angel. I don't know, man. We'll find do out angels, when we get there. Do angels go through pain and suffering? Will they help people? Yeah, but is that their own pain, you know? What what's an angel's job in, in the Bible? Uh angels are defined as messengers. So they basically uh send messages or work for God. So like you God's Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> basically i should i should use that i should use that yeah they're messengers and they they are servants of, of god um, mm -hmm. and do his will i've heard sam harris say Terrorism is the horror of religion that allows sane people to believe by the billions what only lunatics could believe on their own. So I want to have, have, have a discussion on these terrorists. One, is it just um, Islam people? Muslims. Like Muslims. Is it just them who commits the terrorist attack? And also, is it them being insane or is it them is is it due to them believing in islam that they commit those acts i think you can answer that question i think we should caveat by saying like anyone who does anything like the terrorist attacks we see in the media it's like 0 0.0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 percent less like even less than that than someone who follows our religion and at the end of the day I think the fundamental thing is that it's a misinterpretation of of the message you know there would be no god in my view that would ever want anyone to inflict unnecessary harm on others 
If you're doing that, you're not following God. So maybe from my perspective, it's people who have certain psychological predispositions who come across the word of some religion and they use it to justify the things they would probably do anyway. And that's why, just because they're associated with the religion, it gets a bad rep and that negative perspective is associated with the religion. But it's just it's just another way that they can justify it. So I don't think it's anything to do with, you know, there's jihad or whatever in, in um, Islam and stuff. But sacrifice when they do No, they do. I, we learned about it in GCC, which was age ago. I can't, I can't truly remember. But I think, I think we all, everyone agrees that, that the, the message of the religion is not that. Mm. And it's just bad. When bad people get a hold of good ideas, they can make them bad. You know? I would agree. But isn't it just that religion that does it? That no. I was... No, I mean, there's, there's horrific things that happen everywhere. You know, there's corrupt, there's corruption everywhere, mate. There's corruption in government. There's some corruption in charity. There's some corruption in religion. It's just, there are some corrupt people. And they so, they will infiltrate things, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with that one. Um, I think it's not necessarily just uh, religious um, people. Um, I also think that you know um, terrorist events. It depends what you're defining as uh, as a terrorist. But I also think some people just wake up one night and they want to blow stuff up. Some mm. people just want to go cause some damage. People yeah. want to carry a gun or two to school or do whatever it is. They're not necessarily... That's uh, the thing. You look at school shooters who aren't associated with any religion. They just hate the world. Man. Yeah. And maybe that same feeling of hating being itself, hating existence, just comes through in another way. So that's what's going through the head, sort of like a school shooter. Well, it's interesting. You've read Peterson's 12 Rules for Life, yeah. and he talks about um, you know, the group of uh, one particular group of school shooters in one of his chapters and how they got to the darkest possible mental state that you can go. Not just where you hate your own life, but you hate life itself, and you'll do anything to cause as much destruction as you can. So yeah, I think I think that's just the same thing. Just, just religion in some points is the justification for it, but you see it politically. You can see it in people's personal lives. You know, if someone does a horrible thing, they're not going to like say, "Well, oh, that was actually my bad, guys. I'm in a bad state." Do that, are they? They're going to say, "Well, it was because I was abused as a child, or whatever." And as much as those things might be true, that's still just a justification for a thing you did. I, I read something that was like, um. Political extremists come come under three themes, and that's injustice, the need for identity, and the desire to belong. And they want to belong to a group, so they believe in something and channel their energy into hatred. Mm. And religion offers a place for mm. people to feel wanted, people to feel that they have, they are someone or something, and it's something bigger than themselves. And perhaps that's why religion is on the forefront when it comes to these things. Yeah, because people are inherently tribal, you know, it, because there are different religions and things and different ways of believing. We like to naturally identify with our own group and have that us versus them mentality and then create hate for another. We're kind of we're wired to do that in a way because that's what we needed when that's what our ancestors needed to survive in tribal warfare and stuff um but obviously nowadays that just isn't necessary but it still still shows up but you wouldn't be able to link this to any sort of dark side of religion and dark side of the bible because we discussed that in the old testament is quite dark and yeah so what is this dark side of religion um, it depends. Depends what angle you're coming from, uh, and what you mean by by dark. If by dark you mean um, the Bible or other religious texts acknowledge that that horrific things happen and have happened even by the hands of religious people, then yes, uh, there are there is the dark side of religion because I suppose you would expect for people who talk about God, someone beautiful, someone loving and understanding, there is no talk of you know. Um, killings or hatred or or whatever it is but yeah fact of the matter is the bible for example um you know it acknowledges all the bad things that we do um even at the hands of people that god very much loved so yeah uh, in, in that way it, it is it is dark um but i also believe that 
there are dark aspects of sort of um, how the world operates because the Bible and I think a lot of um, the main religions acknowledge that there is a spiritual realm. So there is a realm that is not just the physical, where it's the flesh, things that I can touch and feel and see. There is a realm out there that we cannot necessarily feel or touch, whereby um, it, it can exert influence on the physical. Um, and that influence can either be good or bad. So in, in that way, there's also the belief that there is a dark sort of side of the world. Have you experienced any of the spirit realm? Um, you say you're spiritual. Yes, yes, I suppose. Yeah, that's one of the terms, isn't it, about like religious people are defined as spiritual because they believe in spiritual things. Uh, I've experienced it to the extent of experiencing God, um, his change over my life, because it said to every Christian, every true Christian, has the Holy Spirit in them. So the Holy Spirit is just God's Spirit. It's just the Spirit that comes from God that makes you realize, uh, come to come to a knowledge of who God is and what his sort of plan is for you. And that that is the way that we're supposed to kind of lead out our lives. But it's not until we have this realization um, that, you know, um, God is real and God is true. And through Jesus, we can know, um, you know, the true way of God that the Holy Spirit actually like changes your life, that sort of thing. So in that sense, I'm spiritual and I've experienced spiritual things as to like the dark stuff, like, you know, there's talk about demons, there's talk about all sorts. And I think the main religions have like, um, some word for demon, quote unquote, um, I haven't experienced that sort of side of things, but I truly believe that it exists. Mm. I mean, yeah, there's darkness everywhere in life. And if, if the Bible didn't have darkness, it wouldn't be a reflection of reality. It was just happy-go-lucky. And these are all those people doing great things. It should be like another children's book. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit, I discovered the Trinity the other day. Yeah. Um, that's quite interesting. Mm. But how does, what does the Trinity represent and what's, Jesus is rolling. So the Trinity is one of the more complex things that you can experience as a Christian or even ask about with regards to, you know, Christianity. But Holy Spirit, which uh, I'm sure Joel can expand on, um, the Trinity and stuff, Jesus' uh, role is basically the person who is the um, personification of God. Yeah. He was God incarnate, God in meat, the human version of God. There you go. Yeah. And he's the one who uh, came down. He did all the wonderful things that he did. And at the end, he died for, you know, for all of us so that we can come to know God. Right. And then the Holy Spirit is also defined as a person. But some people sort of see him as like a force, a power, you know, like mm. air or something like that. But he is defined as a person um, that's almost like um, the the power behind all the acts that happen within the kingdom of God, right? So if, for example, uh, Jesus is like, I don't know, performing these miracles or doing these, you know, crazy feats, or even just the simple things like praying or uh, doing good, that's all through the Holy Spirit. That's all inspired by the Holy Spirit who empowers the people of God to um, do things. So in that sense, some people believe he's just a power, but he's actually a person that's almost like the engine or the power that is behind everything that we do. And then the Father, God the Father, who is part of the Trinity, is almost like the command center. He's almost like, you know, the dude that's depicted as the long white beard. He's always in heaven. He's never depicted down here, right? And yeah, he's he's the one whom we pray to, and it's almost like he the one he's the one who makes the plans and make sure that they're carried out accordance to what he wants. But at the same time, these three persons are one. That's the confusing part. Why would God be always in heaven? Um, because he lives in heaven. That's what, that's his dwelling place. That's where he's chosen to, to, to live and to establish himself, that he's in heaven and there's a difference between him and us. We are down below and he's up above. So maybe by getting closer to him, like really getting closer to heaven. Yeah, potentially so. If, in fact, I wanted to ask you guys, do you guys believe in 
sort of um, in the dark side of things like in um, the demonic or in evil forces or uh, even good forces what yeah. what's your sort of take yeah on? reality is the line good yeah i think that reality both the world outside of us and our internal experience is a battleground between forces that are good and forces that are bad mm. um and i think life is about winning that battle or trying to win that battle mm. and i think yeah all the religions how they depict whether it's satan or, or demons or whatever that's what they're, they're trying to portray the part of ourselves that is evil you know like the line between good and evil runs through the heart of every man is one of my favorite quotes because i think it's true and I, I see that in myself in small things of like we all know how dark we could be yeah but the overcoming of that that's that's the beauty of life definitely and i think that's concepts like yin yang and things like that chaos and order good and evil that's life man that's that's the human experience that's what we do you know even just how you're randomly put in this position in life in this world with the people around you and the stuff you need to do and maybe you set a direction of where you want to go that's good you, know, you want to be a good person you want to do a good thing mm -hmm. on that path there will be thousands of small little distractions trying to take you off and gripping your attention um taking you away from that good thing you want and that's that's it again that's that same dynamic yeah um and that's that's what life is life is overcoming the the evil forces within you okay yeah okay. Um, i agree with joe and we sort of say oh that person is fighting demons and that's because of maybe addictions and bad lifestyle and all this stuff so we think it's a force on earth and i also take the position of i think people have a angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other mm. so it's possible to go both ways okay mm. and where does that where does that image come from of that angel and, and devil on your shoulder man it must you know that's def it's reflecting something about human nature when anything happens you can see a good side of it and a bad side of it and you can also see when you're just on the street walking around you see people who just look in despair and it's like they're, they're trapped like they can walk around they can live their life they can talk to you you can have a little small talk conversation but they're stuck in hell on earth in a dark place and that's because they've lost the battle within themselves and, and that doesn't mean they can't go out and win it tomorrow or next year but you can see it you can see chaos I, I can see it there and you when you meet people you can tell and you can also tell when you meet someone who has themselves in order you know we're, we're not always it's not black and white we're not either a chaotic person or orderly person we're not good we're not evil we're a mixture of the two but you can tell when someone is winning the battle you can just and it's a, it's a vibe thing you meet someone and you gel with them and you're like that that guy, there's something there. You know, he's got that sparkle in his eye. Mm. And that's because somehow, some way, they've managed to win that battle. But everyone has to find their way, and it's different for everyone, you know? Yeah. Okay. No. So it's amazing. It's a good, good way to put it. Yeah, man, I would agree as well. I would agree that, yeah, life is made up of this, this battle between good and bad. And some people do end up in, you know, in a period whereby they're just trapped and they just can't see a way out. And, um, it doesn't mean, like you say, uh, it doesn't mean they can't overcome it. It's just that they themselves sort of believe they're it's stuck and they can't put themselves out mm. of that situation. And I don't think they can be forced out of it by anyone else. It has to come from you. And that's something I've been trying to figure out. And maybe it will be the thing I try and figure out for the rest of my life. But it's what what is it that can help? make someone overcome that evil force what is it because i've thought about it like is it is it faith in something higher than you is it a level of self-belief is it the way you've been treated as a child and the experiences that molded you what is it because i don't know where people get that from and that's something i'm trying to figure out if it's faith then it could be god people use god as an escape and mm. rescue Mm. but you must have in your job like you must see people in hell like the criminals that you deal with oh yeah 
the yeah. way you do. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. And uh, that goes back to sort of having people trapped in their sort of situation. Uh, a lot of people don't sort of the, the, help, the help that we offer. My job is a lot easier and I can certainly apply it when people want the help. Mm. But if a person is trapped and they just cannot see beyond their issues and their problems and um, the things that they experience that, for, you know, for the most part are unjust, you can't help them. There's nothing you can do. Um, they just live in the dismay. They just live in the in the horrible part of living this life. And you, you can't you can't do anything to help them outside. They have to have the strength within themselves to say, OK, I, I want to be better. I want to do better. I envision better things for myself. It's only then that actually you can see visible change. Yeah. How can you help someone, someone that doesn't want to or that can't help themselves? Yeah. yeah. And where does that come from? Like, I, I think about myself, it's like, I wasn't always like this. And what happened? And I can't pin it down to a moment. I can't pin it down to a day. I mean, I can think about some things when I was a kid that might be quite weird. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to figure that out. Like, where does that age? Like, I, I'm, I've talked a lot about my videos about things like agency and taking responsibility for your life. And but where does that come from? Because you can't just tell someone a thing. You know, they have to. They have to find it in themselves. And that's why I love another quote that I love from Carl Jung, where he said, um, "Those who look outside dream; those who look inside awaken." Mm. And that's that's one of my what favorites. What does that mean? It means if you look outside yourself to try and figure out what you're supposed to do, who you are, what life's about, you live in a dream, you live in a fantasy. But if you look inside yourself to find those answers, well, then you might find the truth. You might be awakened to the truth. And you can understand more and more of yourself. Yeah. But why yeah. is that important? Because, you know, if, if you if you live just for the external world and how that views you, then you're just a persona. That's That's not you. And... The persona can never feel true love because it isn't you. You can be praised as your persona, but it's not you. You know, you know inside that you're playing a role, you know, and who you're actually supposed to be, the world can't tell you that. It'll try and influence you. And when it does, it won't lead to a good path, man. Keeping up with the Joneses is so stupid. But yet we all do it because we're all kind of like wired to want to compete and we want status. But you just, it's not a good game to play. What That's... do you mean keeping up with the Joneses? You know, like, you know, this guy's got a Tesla, I want a Tesla. Oh, okay. This guy's got a big house, I want a big house. It's it's the game, you know, Alan Watts used to talk about the game we're all playing. That's what he means, you know. We're all just playing a big game of Monopoly. And I don't want to play it anymore. I just want, I want to be Joel Clifton, man. So you play your own game. Exactly. You play, and once you find your game, you know. You know when you find your game. I mean, we say, and I think one of the meaning of life is to so to win the battle within yourself, and that's essentially winning the game. That's it. Yeah, that's the game. You know, we are in this weird virtual reality. My virtual reality headset is just my brain that I'm living out this life. I mean, because everything around us, that's just frequencies. You know, what I see is just light bouncing off me hearing your guys' voices. That's just sound waves being picked up by the auditory centers of my brain. I'm just in this single player game, and I've got to figure out what the objective is. And then I've got to go and try and do it. And, you know, the, you, you can't win life. You just have to keep playing. Because that's where the joy is, man. The joy isn't in winning. Just like we said before we started recording that, yeah, I won my A-levels. I did the best I could possibly do. But winning doesn't feel good. It's moving towards the win. Keeping keeping playing the game. But isn't winning getting to heaven? Like I've said to you before, heaven and hell are here right now. You know, right now having this conversation with you guys, I'm in heaven. And yeah, no. maybe the other day when... I ended up doom scrolling through YouTube. I was in hell, and low in life ends. Those that polarity probably persists wherever we go next, whatever that means, you know. On the Christian side of things, I would agree with Joel in saying um, you win by knowing God. You know, just like he he finds joy and pleasure, and he feels like he's living by just having this conversation right now. And I think what he says there about knowing God, and what I say about the awakening that you find within yourself, I think they're the same thing. I think what has been symbolized as God is just the game you're supposed to play. And what religion does is it gives people a clear instructions of like, this is how you play the game and you play the game right. I got to say that one of, that's one of the best quotes I've ever heard. What? You know, just, uh, 
And well, another what you just said now, but like what you said just uh, moments ago about um, life and um, how you uh, play the game. You don't win life. You just got to continue playing. Well, that's actually it's, it's not my idea. It's, it's a, there's a guy called Simon Sinek mm. who has he wrote a book called The Infinite Game. All oh, right. I read it, but I just heard him on podcast talk about it. And he says in life, there are finite and infinite games. Mm. So a finite game is I'm going to study so I can do well in this exam and get this grade. That's a finite game. An infinite game is I want to learn things. Infinite games don't end. And the goal of an infinite game is to keep playing. Mm. Life life is finite. Yes, we die. But life's an infinite game. Because mm. you never get... To, you, you can never know everything. You can never be the best version of yourself. That doesn't exist. That's the carrot at the end of the stick that you're always chasing. Um, and that's one thing that, yeah, I've, like, like we said before we started recording about my A-level results and things, I just want to play infinite games. I, I don't care. There's no, there's no finish line. Mm, no. So I'm just, I'm running the race. And I'm enjoying it. And it's yeah. tiring at times. I get yeah. dehydrated. That's, that's what life is. But I'm enjoying the run. Absolutely. It's running yeah. the race, man. But I don't even think that life's infinite because we're in energy. So energy is neither created or destroyed. So when we die, our energy, surely we just go with our spirit and then we go into, into the spirit world or we remain on earth and mm. we go on to the next thing and we go on to that game. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think the Joel Clifton game will stop, but the game of just life won't stop. Mm -hmm. You know, whether I just whether I'm just a small fragment of evolution and all my all the, the nutrients and atoms and molecules that make up me will just go into the soil and feed a tree. That's great. Or or whether I go into a another dimension, another world, and exist as another being. That's still that's the game, isn't it? And I I won't know that. You know, I'm just Joel Clifton. I'm just living out this experience. So. Surely then the game's infinite. Maybe. And as tiresome as life can be, we all want to live forever, I think, most of us. Yeah. I don't like the idea, though. It's scary. Why? Because living forever, you'd see everyone pass and die. And... Mm. No, no, no. Everyone else is exactly in the same position as you. So what if everyone lived forever? Yeah. Like in the most ideal world, because I think that's what we crave, isn't it? It's just, uh, just want to live life, be happy, well, enjoy. You know, you gotta. That's we we desire good things, and imagine this perfect world where, like you say, energy, your energy. If you pass away, you just continue and you live along. Everyone else is exactly the same. Is what I'm saying. Imagine that, and you just continue. That's I think that's kind of beautiful. However, with no death, there's no urgency. So what would be the point in doing anything? Hmm. Well, if you could do everything, there'd be no point in doing anything. Hmm maybe living forever i'd be okay with it as long as i can move into a different dimension if i'm stuck on this earth i'd be fed up because i'd be <laughs> i'd be old and i i just get to like 200 and i just see everyone just like I don't yeah i know no. them anymore no no that's yeah that's definitely not what i was what i meant <laughs> you just yeah old wrinkly and you stay like that for ages no 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 that's definitely not what people i think envision when they picture eternity so I've really, if if I've lived forever, then I've been here since the start of time, and I've just been, doing just been the, 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 going the, through the different, different experiences, up, up up the ladder of the multiverse. I mean, I, another quote that I love is we we studied um romantic poetry in A level English lit, and there was William Wordsworth where he said, "Our birth is but a sleep and a forgetting." So maybe you know, you're born, and he, he wrote this poem called "An Ode to Immortality." about how when we when we're birthed into this world we come from this place um and have a human experience where we forget everything we knew beforehand and we try to figure out what it meant to be human and why we were here so maybe we do just travel through different experiences like the human one in parallel dimensions and somehow i've ended up here in joe clifton's body but, but i feel like it must all have to contribute to something larger because if you just forget when you're born and then you you die and you forget everything. It has to be all for one cause, otherwise there's no person being there in the first place. Maybe for the cause is just to play the game. But what if you forget and the game's sort of not been stored and you just sort of move on? And yeah, but you know, when a new Pokemon game comes out, it's the same, the same uh, process. You know, you go and catch Pokemon, you train them, you battle against people. Same thing you've always done, but maybe it's a new map and new characters. Just and keep... if keep playing the game yeah and if life was a game there's got to be someone who created it right 
Yeah. That's another question, though. Where's the Monopoly man? Where yeah, is he? yeah. That's that's that's, 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 that's totally God. another question. But that's God, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you know, people don't want to acknowledge that. I think a lot of people, um, they just think they just say it, we're it, just here. But it was like I was saying to you in the in the, in the steam room earlier today. Like when I say to people, like you know, any of this kind of stuff that we're discussing now, they will just be like <laughs> stupid. <laughs> um, you know, that's not true. It doesn't matter. And my response is, okay, let's say it's not true. And my life benefits through believing it. Mm -hmm. um, and isn't that all that matters? Like, if I die and just become food for worms, I won't know. I'll no. be dead. Yeah. So if it benefits my life to believe that we're all playing a game and there's a God that we need to serve, we're doing good things and that doing good things is right and that telling the truth is right and that we should try and be better, I'm the only one that benefits. But that, yeah, I, I totally get that. And I just find it really, really funny when people really get riled up and angry. And they're the people that profess that they don't believe in God or they don't see the point in what you're doing. So what? Like, yeah. like if, why do you care so much if, if, if you yeah, don't believe it exists? Yeah, it's, it, I find it funny when that dynamic is happening. You know, you get so angry and like, oh, you know, what's your point? What's this? What's that? Well, if, if you truly believe what you're saying, then. This is no point in you, you know, trying to yeah. talk to me or get angry or do all these things. As I was saying at the start, um, about the different realities inside each other, what if we started from a really small one i've just gradually gone up and up and up this ladder from different lives and different lives and different lives and different lives and it's just getting higher and higher and towards this more heavenly state and earth if earth is heaven then there could be one that's exaggerated heaven like that in dante's inferno yeah i mean then you'd be getting into weird things like our cells conscious and our animals just like you know, that that's the buddhist view isn't it that like the more you awaken, the more you reach that state of nirvana, then you kind of you go from being an insect to a small rodent to then a dog to then a horse and a human and then you, whatever, mm. you know? When, but you know, you go. When Buddha say that there's um no self, what what does that mean? Um for me it's the I Joel Clifton is a big lie, really. It's just like a label that's been put on my spirit and my 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 meat vehicle. Like that that's what they I think that's what it means. Like the idea that I own this shirt is a lie. You know, this self is like the ego. I think that's what it means. Is that right? I have no idea. Um I can only guess it, it means something around those lines. Um, but potentially also that um our product of the product of us being here is not of our own making. So in that sense, we, you know, there is no, there is no self because I've decided or someone's decided that, you know, my name is Philip, but is, is that truly, you know, self, is that truly my identity? Potentially not if you're looking at it from the, you know, um, Buddhist point of view. So maybe mm. because the reason why we exist is not because I went up to God and said, yo, I'm ready now. You know what I mean? And we have to identify with our body and our life because that's how we just survive and don't go mental but really if you actually think about it you own nothing because when you die you can't take any of it with you like i can't take my body or my brain or the things that i possess or the people around me i can't take them with me yeah you know and i think most people see that as a as a problem because like if you're rich for example like you want to take all that stuff with you right mm. but yeah i think it's so liberating to know that actually I don't really owe anyone anything and you know I'm I'm free because when you go you go it doesn't really matter what's what's down here and what's what's happening you just you just you're just off so if we are if we, if there's no such thing as a self then these labels that we put on ourselves and who we are do they not exist depends what you mean by exist mm. <laughs> yeah you know like Define After terms. Die, they just get yeah, Jake, you know, Jacob Matthew in three generations, no one gives a shit. 
but I want this. I want this to be like I, I don't want to live a whole of my life, and then after that, it doesn't amount to a greater thing. Why not? Because then there's no meaning of life or meaning of your life. However, as long to my life. So Jacob, correct me if I'm wrong. You've just said there that if your life ends and you are not remembered, then your life didn't mean anything. I mean, that's kind of true. I kind of agree with that, but, but I think doesn't your experience? mean something to you like yeah avoiding pain and yeah and doing good and things like that there's no purpose do you know what i mean if, if it's all going to end then like why why do these things sort of the purpose jacob is to play the game you know the game because it's true even if you become a household name right if you zoom out far enough you can't see the earth and that means and in 5000 years time you won't be a household name you know the household names in the 1700s do we know them no i mean they didn't even have newspapers do you know what i mean like in 5000 years even if you become the leader of the world you probably won't be known about i also think the train of thought you're having is also very very normal cuz i've had it and i think many other people have it we it's so important in our lives where we start to think, what is the purpose of all these things? What is the purpose of my life? I want to achieve something with the breath that I have, right? I think it's a normal, natural question. And I think you will figure that stuff out and you will be at peace when that answer comes to you. I feel like Joel is a bit further than you in that regard because you seem to um have acknowledged your sort of like who you are and you sort of you seem to be finding a bit more of a glimpse of like what makes you tick and what the purpose of your mm -hmm. uh, of just life in general but maybe yours is um and i think you will also find that answer because it's it, it's, it's it's natural it's natural and i think jacob this is my prediction is you'll have to go and Go through all the trials and tribulations, just as I will. Achieve the material desires that we want to realise that that's not what we wanted. But only until that day will you, will you like not? You won't know that until that day. It's like Jim Carrey said in that like iconic interview where he said, "I wish everyone could be rich and famous to realise it's not what they wanted." Yeah, it 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 is it is like I I get what you're saying in that we need we need to feel like something. A bigger than ourselves matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I get that. But maybe what's bigger than you is just how you affected people, you know, because that's valuable. That, you know, maybe may, we want respect, we want status, we want to go down in history. If you just go, if you just expand the time scale, no one, I mean, who was the king of Czechoslovakia in 800, year 800? Do we know? No. It was probably a. a great blood well probably probably a knobhead to be honest the people in part back then but what i'm saying is like if you're if you only focus on how you'll be remembered then you won't play the game you need to play i don't like the idea of dying and no one will care though and like at some point because at some point no one will yeah mm. at some point no one will mm. i get that so you have it's, to it's, it's sort of it's sad but i think life is so, so much more beautiful i i think you got to expand your view a little bit and p perhaps it will take trials and tribulations to figure that out. Um, but I truly believe you guys are well on your way to figure that out. I mean, this conversation is a testament of that. Alan Watts talks about this idea that I really like about how um, life is like you're falling, right? Everything's so transient. So everything's just falling through infinity. And he said that you're, you're falling and so is the earth and so is human life. Everything is just so finite and transient and eventually you know we just it's a constant fall through whatever's going on right and he says what people do is when they try and identify with their life and who they are and the things they do and they want to be remembered and they want a legacy he said they're just holding on to that rock that's also falling and it doesn't change the fact that they're falling they're trying to hold on but everything is still going to the same place what does the rock represent rocks like earth like life you know what i mean so he's he's what he argues is people like will cling on to their identity on earth and stuff thinking that it stops them from being meaningless or being just part of the the game that life is but at the end of the day the earth is just as transient as you are you know one day jacob the sun will explode in that aspect you know um i think that it's impossible to know the influence that a person 
has on other people or the world. It's that's, absolutely impossible. That's so true as well. Because you, you, you don't know the lives that you've touched. Just maybe like the absolute most random interactions you've had walking around, I don't know, in Tesco or something, and you said yeah. hello to that to that little girl or to that woman or whatever. I've actually had like real experiences of that. So there was a guy that I used to just see when I used to go for a walk and say hi, hello to whatever. And then I did a fundraiser for my basketball team and he dropped an hundred pound check through the door. And all I'd done is said, Hi, hello, how are you? You know, how are things, how's yeah. work? Like and if you think about it, you know, in your life, let's be really conservative and say that you had a positive impact on a thousand people. And those thousand people from what you said and did affected a thousand people. That's a million people. Do you know what I mean? Like that's something that really motivates me when and I'm then thinking about there's a million about... people and other million people and then you can change the world. Exactly, Absolutely. brother. Exactly. Absolutely. There are like, people that continue to live now whose concepts and ideas we still talk about. Mm. They, they were gone ages ago. Yeah. Still are influenced by things that happened hundreds of years ago, yeah. even if we don't know the person's name. Yeah. You know, T tiny little things and yeah, and how you can affect people. Like basically, Jacob, if you go out there in the world and and try and be a good influence on even the tiniest of things, the effect that you could have is absolutely ridiculous. Like yeah. even now, I went. I was talking, walking around Aldi three weeks ago, and a guy stops me and goes, "I watched you in Beauty and the Beast at Churston in December of 2021." Mm. I was like, "Oh, wow, sick!" And he was like, "Yeah, you guys are really, really good. Are you, are you studying drama? What are you going to go and do?" And I told him about my degree and stuff. And I walked away, and I was like, "That was just a guy in Aldi. How many more guys in Aldis am I going to affect during the world?" Uh, like I was saying, on one hand. Most of us feel like we'll be forgotten, right? And that may be true. But on the other hand, it's absolutely impossible, like we're talking about, to know the influence that we um, have or are going to have on this world. Because you know how many times I've looked around on the street and I'm like, yeah, that's Jacob. I'm going to go say hi. And it's not you. The amount of times <laughs> where I've just, I've, I've thought about you. I thought that a person looks like you. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go say hello. I finally see him again in yeah. Torquay. It's not you. Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's like this guy who looks like you who walks around on my street. The, the amount of influence that you have on people's lives is absolutely incredible and it's impossible to know, but I think you have more influence than you think. Totally, and I've got two more points on that. One is you don't realise, someone might not talk about it, but the influence that you have if you've got a connect, like a close connection to someone. So, for example, something will happen in my life and I'll be like, I need to talk to Jacob about that. Or what would Jacob say about that? Yeah. Or I'll speak to people and I go, yeah, um, but, you know, Jacob supports me on this or Jacob would think this. So that that's it. Like if you if you affect someone enough, you'll be like an integral part of their life. Yeah. And then they'll talk about what you talk about to other people. So another point, your children. OK, the principles that you can instill in your children, they might they might not associate with you because they might go through a time where they don't like you like most kids do. But you get to build their personality to some degree. You get to teach them mindset principles, how the world works, you know, what it means to be a good human being. And then they go and have their children and they might not realize, oh, you know, I need to teach my kid about the importance of compassion because my dad did. They're just going to teach their kid about compassion because they're a compassionate human. You know how you live for your children? Your children's like a part of you. Yeah. In that way, you live on. Yeah, yeah. 100%. That's for why, ages. That's why it upsets me when people say, I don't want to have kids. Like, it's not like until you have kids there is no one in your life more important than you once you have a child well, they're more important than you because they're going to live longer than you will and you impart everything and, on them exactly and 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 also your children affect all these other people as exactly. well. oh, yeah. and your children will go and have children yeah and really if you you can you can if we want to think about it you can change you can pivot your bloodline in to some degree you know if if you if you can instill a certain philosophy for life and completely change maybe someone in five generations time like you don't know maybe the name jacob matthew will be forgotten but if you just try and tell the truth and do good things like then who knows god only knows what that can cause i am willing to speculate that the things the conversations that we're having the way that we are right now has been influenced by whoever came before us mm. we don't even know who we you know their name right now because so many times i've walked around you know and, you know my family and they say oh yeah that's exactly what granddad used to do i don't know his name mm. i don't know what happened to him i, I never met him but 
the influence that he that people continue to have on the generations to come is just exponential it's ridiculous and if you think like i've been influenced a lot by how my mum is but my mum is how she is because of the experiences she had because of her parents and her parents were how they were because of their parents and all along the line you know so yeah like I think having children is a beautiful thing. Like I've thought about this a lot. Like all the things I do, I really, if I really break it down, is to be a great father and a great husband. That they're the two things. Like that's when I know I've I've completed the game. In some degree, that's like the highest goal of the game. So the conclusion is get married. The conclusion is get married, have children, be a good dad, mom. Yeah. But all the so so the first two humans let's say adam and eve we are still a part of them mm, yeah. we still have their good principles that yeah. all the way down yeah yeah Absolutely. yeah i mean you know if you are going to go down back that creationist mindset you could say when they ate the forbidden fruit it changed human nature forever i mean really we were just another animal that didn't know anything before that happened that's when we were open to the suffering and the darkness in life. Yeah. Is so that happened at this at the start of time. But is time infinite or did did that have a start date? What do you mean by time? Because Is there a start of time? Our idea of time in terms of days, months, years is just a human creation anyway. But they say like the earth is how many like, Seven billion years old or something. Big Bang was like three point six billion or something like that years ago. So I suppose that's an answer for the start of time, isn't it? On the on this earth. Or this galaxy or this universe. Yeah. In but, some sense it depends who you are. If you're God, the what we believe is God, then he's immaterial, he's timeless. So mm. he lives outside of time. In that sense, time is finite. Yeah, it's a beginning and it's an end. But is the end of death or for you it is. Well, for Jacob Matthew, yeah. death is the end, yeah. yeah. But not for the world. I'll back on this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll just keep take prescription drugs to, <laughs> to, to make me live longer. <laughs> or like that guy. You see that guy online called Brian Johnson who's like spending millions of pounds, millions of dollars to just like... You told me about him, yeah. And he's got a, he's predicted to live to like age 149. Oh, I've seen ads and things like that. I haven't bothered to check out those videos. Yeah. It's, it's quite scary. Could there be a drug that allows you to live longer? No. But like, I, like I've said before, I think in our lifetime, we will get to choose to extend our life significantly, maybe even indefinitely. With like, we can put your brain in a robot. Or we can... But like I've said, we've said on other podcasts before, I don't think it would still be me if I put my brain in a robot. Yeah. You know? And I don't want that, man. I want to live... I don't want that. 100 would be cool. No, I just want to be like, I want to be healthy, and then when I'm not healthy, I'll just overdose on heroin. <laughs> That's a way. <laughs> That's one way to go. Seriously, I'll be 95, and I'll be like, look, I can't really move anymore. Mm. You know, I've done what I need to do now. Have a good night. Mm. It shouldn't be unnatural. You should die naturally. Yeah, if I'm suffering, though, I'll just like... Yeah, but they can just stick a new lung on you. No, I don't want a new lung. I want my lungs. <laughs> Me and Jacob both have that, like mm. that, that material desire, mm. you know, that lust, that that wanting respect, mm. wanting status, wanting mm. people to think you're great, man. Mm. And, mm. and it's just something you have to watch. Like me and Jacob were talking before you arrived about um, ego and how everyone has an ego. And I always talk about my ego as like one of my vices, uh, and that dark part of myself. And Jacob goes, you, "You don't have, you don't have an ego and stuff." And that's because I have to keep it in check. Mm. I have to watch it, mm. otherwise it will take over. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we're you know we we're weird in the things we want to talk about, but it I have to consciously be aware of it because there's always that old part of Joel that's trying to hijack me, the chimp in my brain. If we suppressed all this, then we would. It's like a part of us now. Oh yeah, chats. yeah. I can't. I can't be normal. Mm. Like <laughs> honestly, like <laughs> people. People. Um, Kind of not take the piss, but they'll be like, you know, mm. you're way too cerebral. Look at you with your podcast, you yeah, know, all yeah. of this waffle and mm. and yeah, maybe I could try and fit in and and just like Fortnite again, but yeah. I'd be playing a persona and yeah. 
you know, I, I remember um, Jordan Peterson said a thing live once on a lecture where some guy asked a question like, you know, I hate the fact that I'm a deep thinker. So how do I just be normal again? And Peterson just goes, you can't. <laughs> and then the guy's like, well, what's the solution? And Jordan goes, the solution is to go deeper. Yeah. If that's what you're supposed to do, you have to go deeper. <laughs> and ever since I heard that, I'm like, Got to go deeper. Yeah. Got to go deeper. Yeah, I get that. This is our way. Yeah. And this is, you know, and it, even though it's weird because there's a lot of times I don't feel like I can relate to people. Mm -hmm. The reason I say when I'm having conversations like this, I'm in heaven and I feel fired up and I feel, feel like I'm really here right now mm -hmm. is when I do meet people that get it and I can mm -hmm. have this conversation with. Yeah. It's like next level yeah, positive yeah. emotion because it doesn't happen often. Absolutely. And like I've only got, I can count on my fingers the amount of people that I could actually talk on this level with. Mm -hmm. But but when, when it happens, it's amazing and it happens in places you wouldn't expect, you mm -hmm. know. And I think um, you'll find more of those people uh, wherever you guys go, you know, wherever you guys study or work, I think you'll find them. Mm, and you, you have to find them through putting yourself out there as the weirdo, yeah. you know, because that's when they find you because you're putting that message out to the universe. You know, that's why when I go to university and I move in four weeks time or whatever, I'm just going to ruthlessly pursue my path. Mm. And the people I find along the way are the people I need to find. That's it. You know, and I'm hoping they're out there because I know they are. Yeah. They're just rare. And also... A lot of them do, will repress the thing, mm -hmm. but when you introduce it, then they start coming out of their shell, and that's also a beautiful thing. Yeah, you know, I find that in a friend at the moment. She's like, we had a chat last night, and she's starting to like. She just she spoke to me about something she'd written in her journal, and I was like, that is amazing. And yeah. he was like, you know, Joel, you've you've introduced me to these ideas, and I'm showing you that they work. And for me, that consolidates them. And I'm like, God, I'm not a weirdo. Yeah. I mean, I am, but like, I'm not insane. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're not alone. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to go on to some of the the listener questions. Oh, we've got listener questions. All right. Yeah, we do. Well, so, so yeah. Are they interesting? Are they like about bold people again and stuff? They're not bold people. Actually, I, one of them is a response from a bold person. <laughs> <laughs> so, Philip, we had, we had um, someone ask... She was not your fangirls. Same. To be fair, this was a funny question. Someone asked them, um, if you're bold, where does your face end and your head begin? No, it, it was a... <laughs> but it was a response to, um, um, do, bold, do bold people get a brain freeze when it's cold? Wow. And, and this guy called Tom, he said, nope, we don't get a brain freeze. Is he bold? Yes. Okay. He said, nope, we don't get a brain freeze, but we do develop ice on our heads. Um, if it's cold, we sweat. Basically, the colder the weather, the more brain power we have. It's <laughs> super cold. <laughs> oh, that's Wait, hold on. Where's he coming? Is that? Uh, Facebook. <laughs> oh, of course it's Facebook. Is it some middle-aged bold man? Uh, yeah. Legend. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks, Tom. Yeah, Amazing. Anyway, so you've actually got some listening questions. Yeah. Um, one of them is, uh, can you unpop a balloon if you tape it up? No, because it's deflated. What kind of question? Like, yeah, what? I don't understand. What's the purpose? We've gone from deep philosophical <laughs> insights about life to can you take one balloon? So we're going to say no for that one. Yeah, <laughs> looks like it. Um, another one is: Will we get to a point where you can plant a tree in there? <laughs> <laughs> no, because <laughs> trees need soil, man. Yeah, but you could, you could raise it. Yeah, but then it would just be floating soil. Like, you yeah. know. Can't they grow, like, sort of artificially? Trees? Then it's not a tree, is it? Like, what do you mean? What? I'm going to get back to a weird definition question. What do you mean by tree, JP? <laughs> if you mean a plant, then no. And it depends what counts as in the air. Couldn't yeah. they innovate themselves and just be about soil? Innovate themselves? No. Yeah. No, they couldn't. It's like evolution with plants. Have we, ever, have we had evolution with plants? Yeah, everything's evolution like. Everything from single-celled organisms right at the beginning. Well, allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> Depending on your perspective, came from... Uh, but what, why Why can't they evolutionise themselves to live without soil? Evolu <laughs> that's, that's evolutionise, right. That's yeah. I don't know, man. Because, Jacob, they're not artificial. You, you know, maybe you, they would so... They would need, what am I saying? You would need so many different genetic mutations and new 
adaptations to be able to live without soil like where they're getting the nutrients from bugs and just your time you need exactly like, it's just not going to happen yeah. unfortunately so that person no trees will not be in the air okay um this is specifically for you joel oh do you prefer serotonin or dopamine wow that's a great actually, <laughs> that's what I, I like that mm. um i like both but i don't know isn't it like we don't have a co constant read but i would say that they're both it's like saying do you like drinking water or eating food like they're both great man we both and we need, we need both them of both of them yeah um you'd die if you had none of either of them but aren't they both sort of the same thing no what's the difference so serotonin is an inhibitory neurotransmitter so which means when when uh impulse is along a neuron and it gets to a synapse um and, and there's another connecting neuron when serotonin is released the impulse does not fire on the next neuron, it inhibits the next neuron, okay? But dopamine is an excitatory neurotransmitter. So when the impulse comes along to the end of the of the neuron and it's a synapse, when dopamine is released, it excites the next neuron and it, the impulse fires and it continues, right? So you need serotonin to stop, inhibit things in your brain. So if you are someone who overthinks, so people who have OCD, who have obsessional thoughts, they have low serotonin. They have less inhibition in their brain. So they're constantly overthinking obsessive thoughts. There's germs here. I need to clean or, you know, I'm, I'm going to be killed when I next go out the door or all of these things, right? These obsessional thoughts, that's, that's lack of inhibition in the brain. Whereas people that have not enough dopamine, that's like Parkinson's disease where you struggle with movement or l lack of motivation because dopamine is associated with drive and reward. Or if you have too much dopamine, then you're overactive. You're that um, high dopamine is associated with things like schizophrenia. So that's a very long-winded scientific way of answering the question, do I prefer dopamine or serotonin? But I have to say both, but um, I like uh, dopamine is probably a cooler word. And I'm going to call my dog in the future dopamine because I think it's cool. Wow. Are they both, aren't they both like happy feelings though? Yeah. Because like dopamine's like, come on, let's do this. Let's go. Reward. Yes. And serotonin's like, Oh, you know what I mean. I which, which of those two do you prefer? <laughs> I, I, same answer. I like the ah. <laughs> yeah, need both of them. Which you one do. was ah? That ser serotonin slows things down. Dopamine speeds things up. So it's sort of like weed versus coke. <laughs> well, actually, well, co cocaine and methamphetamine will absolutely explode your dopamine. Not really sure how marijuana affects the brain, but I know those two absolutely yeah your dopamine goes through the roof i'm sort of terrified that you know the difference <laughs> well no it's not <laughs> is it common knowledge yeah oh. because co co people on coke are like they know, go crazy and then they, they just about to do a speech and then they go fucking they nail it oh, and then people on weed are just sort of chill and just i like how he associates back. people do cocaine with people that do speeches and not just <laughs> yeah, like druggies yeah <laughs> <laughs> well you know a lot of rich people that's why it's a rich man's drug so we had a response from Joe in response to your soft determinism football football analogy, which is basically, do you want to just explain what that is? I'll explain it as simply as I can. So I don't think we have complete free will okay. because you can't decide what you're going to think next. And you also can't decide the circumstances you were born in. Mm -hmm. Right. So I see life in, in the context of free will, like we're playing a game. So when you play football, you've got a certain pitch that you can play in. You can't foul other players. Mm -hmm. This is the way that you score. This is the way that you defend. Mm -hmm. You have different roles on the pitch, right? So that's like life in that the thought, the thoughts you have, um, you're not in control of the place you're in and you're not in control of the people around you, you're not in control of. But within those limitations, you can decide what you want to do. You can do a rainbow flick. You can do a step over. You can do a flip flap or all these kind of skill moves, right? So life, you have free will within a, a kind of bandwidth of limitation. Okay. So that, and then he said what? So he said, yeah, but think deeper. Everything you do is determined by everything you've ever done. The type of kick which you do is determined by all your past actions. So the kick you eventually decide upon is ultimately predetermined. Yeah. I mean, that that is Sam Harris's argument is that, you know, when did you ever have original thought? Because when you're a baby, you're not, you know, I don't remember ever thinking and constantly influenced and you're kind of driven by biological desires and then you're put into this society that kind of gives you ways of thinking and then 
you you're just molded by everything in the past that's that's the argument is you don't you don't have a free thought but i I think if i if i started thinking about determinism too deeply then i would just get afraid and i like i like to think i am able to act upon the things that i can't control like my thoughts like you can have a thought but you don't necessarily have to carry it out yes you know i've learned those techniques through mindfulness which i've learned from other things like seeing other people you know the content i've consumed and things and maybe that came from the fact that i was bored and i was bored because of someone else's thing they were doing and you know you go you can go as far as you want and get to the point of ah oh, i didn't decide to do anything but i definitely see his argument and i think there's weight to it but i don't i don't want to believe that because it would make everything seem a bit like, oh, I'm just living out a program that's not designed by me. Like agency is really important to me, like believing that I have some influence on things. But he's definitely got a point. What do you think your thoughts are like when you're a baby? I don't think, I think you're more like a, like an animal. You're just driven by like, I want food, I want love, I want sleep, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah, very right. just distinctive. That sort of decreases over time. Yeah, slowly. because... You know, imagine if all or the only thoughts we had were, I want food, I want sleep, I want sex, I want okay. love. Do you know what I mean? Just like... Sort of like fundamental human needs. And yeah, that's what well, the, the yeah. lowest stage of Maslow's hierarchy. And then as throughout your life, you travel up the stages of the hierarchy and end up wherever you get to. Mm. Yeah. Um. So the last one was... um. It was a hate comment that I found very funny. All <laughs> oh, right. So we get, we get a, a lot of hate comments. Yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful. Because we, we post our shorts on TikTok and yeah. they all hate. It's hilarious. The ones that hate do better. <laughs> and this was this was um, an attack to you, Joel. He said, um, so Owen Denny 357 said, this podcast is eroding my fucking life, you frizzly head, grizzly bear. <laughs> 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 he thinks my hair is frizzly. But he took the time to the write thing. that comment. Okay. Like... Owen, this is for you. My friend, if you have the time to come across our YouTube, uh, our TikTok short and place a comment on it, then clearly I have had some influence on you. So I've won. Do you know what I mean? If you if you really hated our podcast, you're actually helping us on the algorithm by commenting, lad. So if you really want to stick it to the man, then go and you know, go out, go outside and touch some grass. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, get off TikTok, lad. So Do thank you, know? you for the traction. But yeah, we, I appreciate you. And also, you know, maybe my hair is frizzly. That's fine. <laughs> it's got beautiful hair. And anyway. grizzly bears are, grizzly bears are great animals, man. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Um, Should we go on to AI news or yeah, do you have anything else? No, that's it. Yeah, AI right. news. AI, AI, AI news. AI, AI, AI news. This happened in the Isle of Wight. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there's a bot that's uh, got himself a gig as a bouncer. And, <laughs> no, there isn't. And, Not in the Isle of Wight, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> um, so. What it's sort of like, though, is not your traditional Tesla bot. It's designed, it's sort of like, um, imagine sort of like a, an arm is like a crane. Well, uh, imagine sort of, <laughs> so you've got the you've got the club, and outside of it, there's like, sort of like a barrier that sort of opens and, cl- and closes. Okay. Um, but it's still like AI, and um, sort of like when you go into a car park, there's these things that raise up and down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's basically what it's like. Um, but it also like looks at the IDs and stuff. So um, person comes up and whatever does like a face scan with with the ID next to it, and um, basically everything's great for three years. Um, it's working fine and they're sort of slowly expanding. But um, there's um, these conjoined twins that come in, and it doesn't like that. It, it right. doesn't. It, the system doesn't register and believe that this thing's real so it doesn't let them in so um they call out a company guy um to 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 go and do some repairs and to sort of recode and stuff and he's he's not happy by any he's been he's been called (laughs) called out and 
it's quite <laughs> it's quite late at night and he's <laughs> <laughs> that's right he's laughing because he knows his bullshit <laughs> No, I, I found this and it's quite, it's quite, it makes sense. Oh, so compelling. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, he, he's, a, he's not a happy bunny because he's just about to go to bed. He gets called out, called out for work. Turns up in the nightclub and um, you know what it's like. It's like a fat queue of drunk people um, outside wanting to get in. These conjoined twins are holding everyone up. And um, uh, he's in a rush. So he's trying to code and gets the barrier. Um, code against the barrier, but basically what happens is um, the barrier, as he's doing it, falls on his head. So he get, gets a bad head injury. And the end is um, he sues the company and, you know, sorry, he's suing the company and so are the conjoined twins and they're suing the company for discrimination. So um, there's a lawsuit in November, so I'm going to have an update in a couple of months. What do you think? If we've got robots allowing people into nightclubs, why have we started with the Isle of Wight? Do you know what I mean? Like, no one goes there. Like, it's, just, it's a small island, isn't it? Also, do conjoined twins have two different IDs? Are they regarded as the one person or two? Yeah, it must be the one person. They've got, they've got their separate heads, correct? So they've got separate minds, separate consciousnesses. They just mm. share a body. That's so cool. I want to meet a pair of conjoined twins. I'd like to get one on the pod. Yeah, I want to ask some questions like, do you drive a car? How does that work? Yeah. Who mirrors and who signals and who maneuvers? What if you like a girl and the other one doesn't? Yeah. Imagine having sex. Like, Would you have sex with another set of conjoined twins or would it just be another person? Would it be the same kind of pleasure, depending on the brain? Yeah, who, who gets the pleasure signals? Mm. Wow. If you're a conjoined twin, get in, get in touch. But what do you think of that? Um, <sighs> bogus. Yeah, it's just one of one of your bollocks stories. Oh, but absolute bogus. The fact that there's a lawsuit makes it sound like there's a bit of yeah. validity. So, I say can, November. I can get an update in November. <laughs> the latter part, the latter part uh, sounded more real. Yeah. But you telling the rest of the other story was just absolutely. I reckon, Why? They, I reckon they could be a guy that went to fix a robot and it fell on his head and now he's filing a lawsuit. But also, could that... join twins getting into a nightclub in the Isle of Wight. <laughs> yeah, that's not a five minute, minute job to recode a machine. Yeah, true, yeah. You know, for it to like, you know, let someone in. Yeah, but these techie guys are pretty good. But what did he do? Just collect his laptop and do a bit of keyboard bashing and then it's all right. I guess so. Coding in the middle of the night. <laughs> Who's, what company yeah, is this? That's what I mean, he got called out. Yeah, no, nah. From where? He lives on the Isle of Wight as well. I didn't say. Well, I, I, I've got to say, you've really like convinced us in trying to like make it seem bogus. Because, yeah, but it's possible. Like, yeah, Isle of Wight. There's not much happening on there. But well, what's to say? There's not an AI company that just started up, and there's a there's a pair of conjoined twins that live there, and then the rest is fine. Should we try and go to the Isle of Wight and find those conjoined twins? Also, if it's a barrier, just walk under it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I suppose he might have just been doing some sort of, I don't know, rebooting underneath and sort of bang! <laughs> yeah, because I, <laughs> I would imagine as well, I suppose the reason why supposed conjoined twins can't just go underneath and sneak in is because there are actual people there. So the problem is actually the people not letting them in, not the barrier. If you're a conjoined twin, right, so you've got two heads and two legs, who controls the legs? This is fascinating. Yeah. It must be one each, and then they sort of go... No, one each. Yeah. Yeah. I would imagine it's more like just, I don't know, you're so in harmony with each other because you, you share the same body. How do they walk? Like, Oh, it's fast. I need to talk to one of these people. Well, they have Ooh. an argument, and they're just there, and they're just... Yeah. Getting can, you, can you have a conflict as to what action you're taking? Yeah. Like, you wanted to pick up a glass, but then the other just kind of hesitates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Slaps like it's like Wallace and Gromit in the wrong trousers. Yeah. <laughs> you seen that? <laughs> wow. Anyway, I've learned a lot today. That, that was interesting because we went to some really deep places and then we also talked about some, like, yeah. can you yeah. not pop a balloon? That, that's but... basically our whole podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, episode 10. People, thank you for listening. Jacob, where can they go and ask more silly questions? Oh, you can just comment at one of our posts at this point. Just find but... our TikTok and leave some hate comments. There. Um... <laughs> But uh, if you, you're old fashioned, then email um, questions at openmindedpodcast.co.uk. It's probably easier if they just send you an Instagram DM. Yeah, you probably don't answer them. <laughs>
You don't use email, do you? I use email, man. Anyway, thanks, people. We'll see you next week. Thank you for Philip as well. Yeah, man, you've been great, honestly. Pleasure, pleasure. Thank you, guys.